Church. Uh, I'm an architectural historian and also the, uh, I, I served as the curator of urban history for the Newport Historical Society. One thing is a constant in history and is specifically in urban history and that is change or evolution. It's interesting to think that Washington Square is considered venerable, it has very historic buildings on it, yet they've always been changing. In this very uh, rare photograph uh, from the uh, uh, early 20th century, uh, from around the year 1910, it shows the construction in the foreground of the YMCA. And in the background, you see the colony house, the venerable structure that had stood there since 1739. To the right of the colony house is a Greek revival structure by the Rhode Island-based architect Russell Warren, the Levi Gale House. That building, only a few years later in this photograph, would literally be cut in half and moved up the street to Turo Street to make way for the Superior Courthouse. So that building survives, but it was moved. And the story of Newport is the story of moving buildings, of redesign and rebuilding. The Navy YMCA, in the, uh, being built in this photograph shows that ever-changing sense of an urban landscape on the move. And so Newport was not created in one moment. As I write in The Artful City, Newport is the sum total of all of its parts. There was never a master plan for the city, never a grand vision or design, but in the end, it has ended up being an accidental work of urban art where the layers of the town, the history of the town, now present themselves as a work of art. And as a work of art, have many aspects. We approach works of art with admiration. They can provide inspiration. They can evoke condemnation. And so this is a very interesting story because Newport can be all of those things. It can present the glories of history. It can present the problems of history inherent in the buildings and streets we leave behind. Washington Square has two landmarks that remain constant in an ever-changing urban landscape. One is the Colony House, uh, the other is the Brick Market, which one can see in this view from the early 1800s by an un unidentified artist. It is an interesting view of a very early urban landscape in uh, North America. The perspective is from the steps of the colony house. The colony house completed in 1741. Brick Market, the focal point, the end, the perspective end of this painting uh, was completed in 1762-63. It's about a 20 year difference. With the Brick Market building by Peter Harrison, uh, who had one of the finest architectural libraries in the country at the time, you have this very sophisticated rendition of an Italian Renaissance palace, basically, by Andrea Palladio. You know, he had the pattern books of this Renaissance architect who created arcaded first floor palaces uh, with upper stories lined with classical half columns. And now, of course, Peter Harrison was interpreting the work of the Renaissance architect Palladio through the lens of English architects who had documented his work, edited his books, and Peter Harrison is working through that lens. But it becomes the bookend, so to speak, a building inspired by architectural pattern books becomes the bookend of the square. It then complements the colony house. And imagine a building of this sophistication of its time at the very epicenter of the commercial wharf system. Because just to the right in the painting, you will see Long Wharf in the distance, and you can see the ships pulling up. So there's a very functional reason why that building is there. You know, they were uh, commodities abounded on the wharf. But there is this bold statement. Fascinating building because it was at the edge of the town on the water, but it was also on the edge uh, metaphorically because through its history, it would see even more change on the wharf than almost any other part of Newport. The evolution of the city is clearly evident 
in this photographic view from the late 19th century from the colony house to Brick Market. And one can compare that with a painting of just about 100 years earlier from the early 1800s. Here you see the Brick Market still standing firm on the waterfront, but technology had arrived in Newport by the late 19th century. Although Newport was not a major center of manufacturing of the Industrial Revolution, it still is impacted by technology. In 1867, the old Colony Railroad entered Newport. By the late 1890s, the electric streetcar had entered the cityscape. These are industrial technologies that radically changed the way people could access, and the streetcar came right through Washington Square and right by these two buildings. Beyond the brick market in this photograph, you see the bustling wharf area. This would be the subject of great change. As the 20th century progressed, only, only a few years after this photograph was taken, with the 20th century evolving and the challenges it posed, the wharf area would be the subject of convulsive urban change. Up till the 20th century, Newport's evolution had been a story of expansion, of layering, of addition. But by the mid 20th century, something new was afoot. With the rise of modernism in architecture and urban planning, demolition became the order of the day. A historic place celebrated, celebrated by writers, artists, photographers like Henry James and Charles Fallon McKim in Newport and other artists was not as valued by many who embraced the tenets of modernism, which focused on progress and efficiency more than historic ornament and a historic sense of place. Well, those artists through the centuries, though, did have a role to play. The buildings they valued, the spaces they valued, Washington Square, Colony House, the Brick Market, would be preserved. So there's a real world application for those romantic musings of artists. But in 1965, the city of Newport adopted its historic preservation ordinance to safeguard those historic assets. You even see in this photograph, Brick Market, etc. But it was literally at Brick Market where the historic district stopped. Anything beyond Brick Market to the west along the wharves was not included in the historic district. So it could become subject to urban renewal. And so in this photograph, you see this, the, evo the, the physical manifestation of, evo of centuries of evolution, colonial buildings, Victorian buildings, the wharves. That would change. Whole scale demolition would take place literally right behind Brick Market as America's Cup Boulevard was put in. An example of this notion of the, mod, of the modern city. Newport is interesting because you literally have cheek by jowl right next to one another. The historic district and the way historic preservation views a cityscape and modernism of the mid 20th century and how that viewed a cityscape to remove and rebuild. A striking image is Brick Market by itself, alone, desolate. This photograph was taken in the late 1960s when Brick Market stood alone as a historic landmark in the city. It was protected, but the land around it was not. And so here you see it captured in an image, in a photographic form, decisions being made about what constituted the city people wanted. Modernity, history being swept away to make way for modernity, honoring the one major landmark. But what about the rest? At the time this was happening, there was a raging debate about what Newport should be. Many people wrote on the side of preservation saying, but we have a city that's walkable, a city with character. Other people said, we have a city in economic spiral. We have to do something. Both approaches, I call it the dance between historic preservation and modernism. They both were idealistic in their own way, but which scenario would work? Which would provide the vibrant city that people needed functionally, economically, but also aesthetically with human scale? The kind of, with the kind of things people wanted to encounter. 
And this photograph shows it right at that very moment. Now, Brick Market eventually would be surrounded by Brick Marketplace. There were visions, however, of a concrete brutalist building block, the height of modernism around this. That was tempered eventually. But this shows in a very dramatic way which way Newport would go. Now, today, a majority of Newport is a landmark city. It falls within National Historic Landmark Districts or the Newport uh, Established Historic Districts. It's a historic city. Uh, it is a city that knows it's historic. People uh, tend to value this sense of history. But this last moment of urban renewal did create the one convulsive change in the city. It's for the future to tell what the next step will be.